Mr. Freeze Reverse Blast, which I'll refer to as just Mr. Freeze for the sake of simplicity, is a Premier Rods launched roller coaster at both Six Flags St. Louis and Six Flags Over Texas. This shuttle coaster is one of the first roller coasters to use linear induction motors, or LIMs for short, blasting riders not once, not twice, but three times. In this video, I will review both versions of Mr. Freeze, covering the ride's history, the ride experience, and the differences between the two versions. Mr. Freeze was named after the iconic Batman villain, and these coasters were supposed to open in 1997 to tie in with the feature film being released that same year in Batman and Robin. However, both the movie and coaster would have some issues. Batman and Robin would go on to be one of the worst movies of all time, while Mr. Freeze coaster would be delayed until 1998. Mr. Freeze had issues with the LIM launch system. This electromagnetic propulsion method applies alternating current to magnets positioned on the launch track. As a metal fin in the train passes through those magnets, the train is propelled down the launch track. The launch system has no moving parts and can precisely control a coaster's speed, but it requires a huge power draw. Premier Rides first used this system on the Flight of Fear coasters that opened to both King's Dominion and King's Island in 1996. Those two rides were also delayed, but their delay was only two months. The delay for Mr. Freeze was a year. Flight of Fear accelerated trains from 0 to 54 miles per hour, or 0 to 87 kilometers per hour, in four seconds. Mr. Freeze was far more ambitious in several ways. One, the coaster had a higher max speed of 70 miles per hour, or 110 kilometers per hour. Two, Mr. Freeze had a faster acceleration, achieving its top speed in 3.8 seconds. Three, Mr. Freeze had a second series of LIMs, a LIM booster on the vertical spike. During testing, the LIM motors in Mr. Freeze would constantly overheat, so Six Flags could not run the ride at its designed maximum speed. The coaster requires 2.4 megawatts of power per launch. This made the coaster a valley risk if it could not run its original speed. Premier Rides was working on a third coaster as well in 1997 that shared many similarities to Mr. Freeze, both in terms of the theme and the ride experience. The company was working on Batman and Robin the Chiller for Six Flags Great Adventure in Jackson, New Jersey. The Chiller was a dual track roller coaster that would blast riders from 0 to 65 miles per hour or 0 to 105 kilometers per hour in 4 seconds. The ride would also feature an LAM booster on a horizontal spike before initiating the return run. The Chiller was able to open very briefly for guests in 1997 but that ride also had issues with the launch system, especially since the power draw was even higher because the coaster had two sides. Several modifications were made to the chiller over the years, but the ride was removed after the 2007 season due to frequent downtime. Thankfully, Mr. Freeze's issues were corrected. Both coasters opened at the start of the 1998 season and still operate at their respective parks today. However, both rides are still prone to downtime the downtime is nowhere near as severe as the chillers. Most of the issues for Mr. Freeze are 15 to 20 minute delays due to sensor faults, but the ride can valley due to LIM boosters being placed towards the top of the vertical spike. This means that the coaster has no way to rescue itself if the LIMs do not engage. This is why there are catwalks on the coaster's pullouts so riders can safely be evacuated in the event the ride does valley. I have never seen Mr. Freeze closed in any of my visits to Six Flags St. Louis or over Texas, but I know others that have seen the ride close for the day. For that reason, I strongly recommend hitting this coaster first, just in case issues crop up later in the day. At Six Flags over Texas, Mr. Freeze is located in the Gotham City section of the park, towards the back of the park. At Six Flags St. Louis, Mr. Freeze is located in the DC Comics Plaza area, towards the middle of the park. Both coasters are prominent on their respective park skylines, but the way they're integrated into the park is quite different, and that goes to the setup of the queue line. The layout for Mr. Freeze at Six Flags Over Texas is isolated from any walkway. This is because the entire queue line takes place in the Snowy Cones Ice Cream Factory. If you're familiar with Six Flags St. Louis, you know they love obnoxiously long queue lines, and Mr. Freeze is no different. 
the station is a long ways back from the midway. You cross over the park's Thunder River Rapids ride, and then you have a sea of switchbacks in the center of the coaster. While this queue line feels like it's a half mile long, it does offer some incredible views of the coaster. The final section of the queue line finally takes place in a smaller version of the factory. Despite the theme to an ice cream factory, both stations can get quite stuffy on a hot summer day. Both coasters were originally light blue when they opened, but now their paint schemes differ. The Over Texas version received a bright red paint scheme in 2007. The St. Louis version received a darker shade of blue in 2009. I personally prefer the paint scheme on the St. Louis version because that color palette is more in line with Mr. Freeze, but both coasters definitely look imposing. The station itself is, pun intended, cool. The station has an industrial feel to it with the darker lighting and the lack of windows. There are a few visuals as well, with my favorite being the Mr. Freeze figure that looks sort of disfigured, almost like it was crossed with the Joker. Both Mr. Freeze coasters tend to have one of the longer waits at their respective parks. In my visits to the St. Louis Park, Mr. Freeze is always running just one train, which causes that queue line to crawl at a snail's pace. The version over Texas has run two trains in each of my visits, and the dispatches tend to be quicker, which is a good thing considering that park is usually busier. Unlike most shuttle coasters that can only run one train, Mr. Freeze has an innovative sliding loading platform that allows two train operations. The ride has a dual loading setup where when a train is ready to go, it'll slide over to the main launch track. The only downside with this is that it requires double the staff to support both sides of the load platform, which is one of the reasons I suspect St. Louis often runs just one side. Both rides feature the same trains, each seating 20 riders. When the coasters originally opened, they had bulky over-the-shoulder restraints. This was present on all the premier launch coasters built in the 1990s, as lap bars were less common on inverting rides back then. However, these over-the-shoulder restraints were a source of headbanging when coasters like Mr. Freeze navigated their aggressive layouts. Thankfully, both versions of the ride received lap bars for the 2002 season, greatly increasing rider comfort. Because these were retrofit onto the existing trains, Mr. Freeze's trains can be a tight squeeze for taller guests. The issue isn't the lap bar itself, rather it's the redundant seatbelt that fastens to the side of the lap bar. It's the same setup you'll find on the other premier LIM launch coasters that were retrofit with lap bars like the aforementioned Flight of Fear, Six Flags America's Joker's Jinx, or Poltergeist at Six Flags Fiesta Texas. When Mr. Freeze originally opened, it blasted riders out of the station going forwards. In 2012, the ride was renamed Mr. Freeze Reverse Blast, and the trains were reversed, so riders now blast off backwards. I never rode the original version, just the Reverse Blast iteration at both parks. Describing the best seat is always tricky in a coaster with a backwards facing train. The best seat is the back of the train when you're traveling forwards so you want to be on the side of the train closest to the launch tunnel. This is because you'll travel the highest up the vertical spike. Both coasters ride identically to me. The one difference is that the two coasters are mirror images to each other, but that doesn't impact my ride experience in any way. The ride begins by sliding over to the launch track. Once in place, you are blasted backwards with no countdown. The operators will likely tease your upcoming launch, and I love when parks do things like that. The launch itself is not quite as punchy as newer launches. The acceleration feels more gradual, however it is neat experiencing a launch this fast in reverse. This is followed by the coaster's best element, the inverted top hat, and this element is exceptional. It is one of the best inversions in the whole world. It offers a wide range of sensations. It's hard to describe exactly what this element does to your body, but I'll try my best. The pullout into this element delivers crushing positive G's. You then twist 90 degrees towards the sky, oddly getting no laterals. The apex of this element, when you're inverted, offers a bizarre pop of airtime. It's a stark contrast to most inversions, where you get hang time if you come out of your seat. Mr. Freeze tries to pop you out towards the ground. It completely throws off your sense of direction. The descent of this element is a twisted 90 degree just like the ascent, 
but the drop gives a strong jolt of laterals on the way down, especially if you're towards the back of the train relative to the direction of travel. You are then slammed with positive G's on the pullout, and these G's are insane. The rapid changes in forces are extremely disorienting. That's followed by a fast overbank with some good positive G's, but they honestly pale in comparison to the pullouts on both sides of the element. That's not a mark against the overbank. Rather, it's a testament to how tight the valleys are on this coaster. This then leads into the ride's giant vertical spike. This element stands 218 feet or 66 meters tall, which technically makes Mr. Freeze a hypercoaster if you're going off the overall height. However, the train only reaches a maximum height of 194 feet or 59 meters. As you ascend the spike backwards, you feel gravity starting to slow you down. Then all of a sudden, the LIM boosters kick in, and they pull you even higher into the sky. It's a mind-bending sensation defying gravity like this. You get a wonderful visual of the park and some incredible sustained weightlessness during the boost install. The descent is fantastic as well, because you plunge unnaturally fast. The LIM seem to boost you downwards, so you get absolutely slammed back into your seat on the pullout. It's probably the strongest dose of positive Gs on the ride. You then repeat the course going forwards. The overbank is a tad more forceful this time since you have a bit more speed. You then get blasted with even stronger positive Gs at the bottom again, and then you repeat the inverted top hat. The inverted pop of airtime is not quite as strong in this direction since you have a little less speed, but the element is otherwise just as forceful as before. You then plunge back into the launch tunnel, getting one last dose of positive Gs before grinding to a loud stop giving you your first chance to catch your breath. In terms of pacing, Mr. Freeze is darn near perfect. After the initial launch, which is oddly the weakest part of the ride in my opinion, the ride is a fast-paced blitz of positive Gs and disorienting elements. In terms of smoothness, Mr. Freeze is quite comfortable. The lap bars prevent any headbanging. I wouldn't quite call the ride glass smooth or anything since it does jostle you around a bit but it causes zero discomfort because of the way the trains are set up. So what would I rate Mr. Freeze Reverse Blast? I would give this coaster an 8.5 out of 10. This coaster is relentless. The inverted top hat is one of the best elements in the world, and I love how you can experience it twice. The pullouts and overbank deliver strong positive Gs, and then the vertical spike delivers some of the best sustained weightlessness of any coaster. Oddly, I think the weakest part of the ride is that signature backwards launch. It's still solid, mostly because of how unique it is, but it doesn't pack the same punch as the newer launches out there. Mr. Freeze is a great coaster. It's my favorite ride Six Flags St. Louis, and my third favorite coaster is Six Flags Over Texas. So I definitely try to ride this several times each visit. So those are my thoughts on Mr. Freeze, the premier ride's LIM coaster at both Six Flags Over Texas and Six Flags St. Louis. Have you ridden either version? What are your thoughts on this coaster? I would love to hear your thoughts on Mr. Freeze down below. Or I'd also love to hear what you think about the abomination of a movie this ride is based on. There's no such thing as too much bashing on Batman and Robin. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and Muse Park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.